Hello, I am Michelle Davis with the Center for Manufacturing Research at Tennessee Tech University in Cookville, Tennessee. Welcome to the Spring 2019 Golden Eagle Additively Innovative Virtual Lecture Series. This is the seventh semester we produce this popular and informative series. The series is hosted by TTU Center for Manufacturing Research and the iMaker Space at TTU. The CMR is recognized as an accomplished center of excellence that draws together resources of the state of Tennessee, the university, industries, and government funding agencies into a cooperative effort to be on the leading edge of the latest technological advances in the manufacturing field. The iMaker space, located in the Volpe Library on Tennessee Tech's campus, has a goal of providing an interactive and collaborative space for students and faculty to use in pursuit of innovative and entrepreneurial projects. Additive manufacturing is a focus of both entities, and as such, this short virtual lecture series has been planned to highlight the best practices, potential problems, technological advancements, innovations, and scientific contributions in the additive manufacturing field with expert talks from various institutions, industries, R&D centers, and laboratories. Today, we are honored to hear from Josh Dennis of the South Central Region EOS North America in Texas. His talk is titled, Understanding Powder Bed Additive Manufacturing. The speaker will provide his contact information for questions after the presentation is over. Thank you, and I turn the presentation over to Josh. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you again for having me today. And uh, so I'm Josh Dennis, like she said, from EOS Additive Manufacturing, and um, I'll be talking about uh, uh, laser powder bed manufacturing. So I cover uh, seven states in the southeast here, including Tennessee and Alabama, and all the way over to Texas and Oklahoma and the states in between. Um, so I'm looking forward to uh, presenting about uh, the uses and also how, it, how laser powder bed manufacturing works, some of the best, uh, best practice applications, as well as where the industry is going in, in terms of becoming more productive and automated. Um, and uh, it will be a little bit from an EOS standpoint, just because that's who I represent. I tried to make it uh, as non-sales approach as possible. <laughs> so bear with me. All right. So first, we're going to start off just with a little company overview to get you an, an understanding of where EOS is, who we are, and uh, kind of our vision, as well as going over uh, how laser powder bed manufacturing works. Um, then we'll move in the application examples and then the automation examples of laser powder bed. So EOS as a company has been around for more than 25 years. Uh, this is a picture of the headquarters in Kryling, Germany. It is a privately held company uh, founded in 1989 by our um, owner and inventor of the technology, Dr. Hans Langer. Um, still privately held by him and his family. Um, and we have a end-to-end -end solutions from part design and data generation to part building and post-processing. Um, most of the industries served are industrial companies in the medical, aerospace, and tooling industries, as well as lifestyle products and automotive. Um, one of the world leading suppliers of laser powder bed uh, manufacturing. A snapshot is where the com company is now. Um, it's a global company with over 3,000 installs worldwide. Uh, about 50% of those are metal systems and 50% of those are polymer systems. Customers in 65 different uh, countries with over 1,300 employees now worldwide. 750 different active patents that are licensed to the industry uh, in 175 different patent families. And at the bottom, this graph gives a good example of not only EOS's growth, but also the growth of the industry. So if you, you know, looking at the graph, you can see that it took us about 15 to 20 years to sell the first 1,000 machines. It took us about five years to sell the next 1,000, and then three years to sell the next 1,000. So this is based off of uh, 2017 data. So it is uh, rapidly growing in this industry, in the industrial sector, as well as the uh, consumer market uh, as well. 
So just a snapshot of EOS's presence in North America. Got three different locations, uh, two tech centers, one in Novi, Michigan, which is right outside Detroit, another one in Pflugerville, Texas, which is Austin, Texas. Um, and those are tech centers with machines for customer projects and demos, as well as a location in Temple, Texas, where we do uh, custom blending of polymer powders, as well as stocking metal powders for our North American customers for a shorter delivery time. Um, got about 40 different service engineers, 20 different application engineers, 145 total employees in North America, and 500 metal machines in the North American market. From an R&D standpoint, we reinvest, uh, luckily as a uh, private company, we, we are able to reinvest 15% of our revenues back into the R&D program. So this, this uh, equals out with today's revenues, uh, about $2 million a week back into the R&D program. Got over 300 people in R&D, 50 of those being a metallurgist, as well as over 100 machines internally for customer projects, material development, and testing and training. Some of uh, the benefits and kind of how laser powder bed additive manufacturing works. Um, of course, we'll look at just how parts are made traditionally. So, of course, most people already know this, but you start off with a blank material. Uh, then you would use a machining center to remove that material uh, and to be able to get to your final part. So, traditionally, this takes a, a lot of time in the prototyping phase. So, from multiple machine setups. Uh, lead into a final product being made. So, and then once you've developed the product that you want to go with, you then would be um, refine that product, refine that process until you get to the end product, which is a simple and cost-effective uh, product. In additive manufacturing, of course, we're doing a layer-by-layer -layer fusing of material that you're looking to produce with. Uh, all of the prototyping is mostly done in software, uh, so not, not a whole lot of time wasted in the prototyping phase since it's all in a software-based uh, prototype. Then once you uh, produce that product, it's usually a complex and intricate product. Um, so, and now today, of course, there's multiple different ways of additive manufacturing. Uh, just a few examples, of course, are fused deposition modeling, which is FDM. Um, most of your consumer-based and some industrial-based uh, 3D printers are done using this method, uh, where you have a, a spool of usually polymer material that is extruded through a nozzle layer by layer onto a platform. Then there's the stereolithography, which is a UV light polymer uh, done layer by layer. Uh, and then lowered it through a vat of liquid polymer resin, which is a, a limited on a few different uh, materials that are available for that process. And then there's selective laser centering or direct metal laser centering, which is a laser powder bed manufacturing process that we're talking about today. So just taking a, a deeper dive into this, you're, you're able to use either powdered polymer or powdered metal to be able to produce 3D printed parts using this method. So how does it work? Of course, you want to start off in the software. Um, you would design your part, of course, in CAD. Then you would import that into a slicing software that it then takes that model and slices it into the layer thicknesses of the process. So, and then reorients those layers and it imports that into the machine. So once you import it into the machine, you would start off by laying down a, a layer of powdered material in the layer height that you have already specified in that software. Once that material has been laid down, a laser comes in, melts the 2D layer of that layer into the powdered material. The elevator then lowers by the next layer height, and the recoder then lays down the next layer, and laser repeats this process over and over again until you've grown that entire part and that you have a finished product. Once that is done, you have a part that is being surrounded by all the excess powder that you've laid down as well during the process. So you then would raise the elevator and you would remove the powder and excess powder that has been that has not been used for your part and you are able to recycle that powder, whether it be in polymer or metal, uh, for your next uh, part that you want to produce. 
You then would remove that part from the build platform or from a build cake in the polymer um, realm and then uh, do some minor post-processing usually to get to that final part and, and clean it up. So that's just the basic way that uh, laser powder bed manufacturing works. One of the best advantages of this is the materials that are available for this process. Um, you know, in metal, there are multiple industrial materials that uh, different companies use. So this process really yields or gives itself to a lot of really great um, materials to use, especially hard materials to machines such as Inconel and titanium. Those are both very hard materials to work with and especially making complex geometries in traditional manufacturing. Additive manufacturing really is easily uh, easy to produce parts using those materials, which really helps uh, industrial companies, as well as polymer materials. So uh, most of the materials used in this process are nylon 11 or nylon 12 based polymer, which is a uh, very structurally sound polymer and uh, used in many industrial applications already today in injection molding. Uh, one of the benefits of using additive uh, is being able to blend some of these polymers with other materials. So if you look at the PA12AL, that is actually an aluminum filled uh, polymer 12, or nylon 12, uh, excuse me. Um, so you could do that or even steel. Um, and there's also carbamide, which is a uh, carbon fiber filled nylon 12 as well as being able to put additives such as flame retardancy in the uh, nylon parts. So a lot of aerospace manufacturers like this material to be able to uh, make cabin parts, all of those parts. So this material allows these, these aerospace companies to make either vents or um, other parts in, internally in cabins uh, that actually could save weight and save space. So what are the advantages of powder bed manufacturing? Uh, of course, it's the same as many other advantages using additive manufacturing. So manufacturing of complex shapes and also the freedom of design. You look on the left here on this part, it is a uh, casted engine block, which actually uses a lot of material that really is wasted. So if you do it additively, you can see that they've used a complex geometry internally to reduce the weight, but still keep the rigidity of the part. So being able to reduce that weight by over 50% in that. Uh, customized individual products. Um, so in the medical industry, a lot of companies really enjoy this to be able to customize patient-specific implants or tools in surgeries. So uh, many benefits there, whereas in the past, a lot of medical companies and, and medical manufacturers have been limited by just generalizing different sizes of implants to fit multiple different people. Now you're able to uh, individualize and patient specific implants, as well as reducing part complexity. So parts of uh, a part that were using 32 different components that were traditionally manufactured, trying to consolidate those down into three components using additive manufacturing. So reducing the part complexity is a huge benefit, saving time and assembly time uh, required, as well as keeping rigidity or even exceeding the rigidity requirements. So next we'll get into some examples of those, uh, successful ex examples of those uh, applications. So this is an example of a polymer part. Uh, it's a lightweight gripper that would be used on a uh, robot in a factory. So if you look at the traditionally manufactured method, it's full of a lot of different airlines and actuators on top of a steel plate. Uh, so very heavy. A lot of moving parts here and a lot of parts to assemble. So over 21 different parts on this traditionally manufactured gripper. Whereas this is a additively manufactured gripper using laser powder bed. And they were able to consolidate all of those lines inside the part and reduce all the weight, uh, much of the weight of the, of the part. So that way it even requires a cheaper, you know, a smaller robot to be able to lift because it doesn't have to lift as heavy of an object. Uh, so reduce the part complexity down to three versus uh, the 21, as well as it was being able, being able to produce this in one day versus 18 days. So a huge advantage there. This is an example of a satellite bracket antenna, or antenna bracket, excuse me. 
So if you look at the bottom left, you're able to see the traditionally manufactured satellite bracket. Uh, it's full of different screws and rivets and looks like a sheet metal that they were using to make that bracket. Um, they were able to import that model into an optimization software that created the exact uh, geometry that would be perfect for it to keep the rigidity requirements and also reduce all of the material and weight that would needed to produce a um, satellite bracket that would work. So weight was re reduced by 40%. It was all built in one piece and it rigid the, exceeded the rigidity requirements by over 30% and less assembly required due to, due to um, integrated threads in the end of the bracket. <clears throat> this is an example of a the rocket industry really taking advantage of this using Inconel. Uh, this was a 248 different part, a traditionally manufactured part. So there were 248 individual parts that had to be produced traditionally and then assembled after uh, being produced. Able to do all of this in one, one print uh, now. So consolidating all of those parts into one print and reducing the cost by 50% and three times faster in production. This is an example, a medical example of a complex structure you're able to get from laser powder bed. Uh, this is a porous structure. The reason medical uh, implants have really excelled in this is being able to mimic the porous structure of your bone. So this actually helps your bone. Uh, this is a hip implant, so once you get this implanted in your hip on your bone, the, the structure now that they're able to achieve induces your bone to grow into it. So it uh, really helps with the um, healing time as well as being a much more solid uh, uh, implant that is actually way more effective than traditionally manufactured implants. Another medical example, but using a polymer. Um, in the past, uh, whenever you got a knee surgery, you would have to get a, a drill guide uh, made for your knee to help guide the implants and the drill holes that are going in your bone. Uh, so in the past, they would have to do this in the middle of the surgery to try to fit the exact right one for it. Um, now they're able to, before the surgery, take a scan, a CT scan of your specific knee and then import that into one of the machines and, and print out a drill guide that is designed around your bones specifically. So this is leading to a much less time in surgery, which is making it more cost effective, as well as a, a lot more, uh, a lot better implant in the end, uh, one that uh, is gonna be way more customized to your leg. And then also a uh, uh, one of a, a hydraulic for uh, airplanes. So this is a titanium part that now has met all the FAA requirements and one of the only uh, flight critical parts that are additively made and being put onto planes today. Uh, they reduce the weight by 35%, a huge advantage in the aerospace industry, as well as uh, they eliminated 10 parts from this. So, and, and kept the functionality of the traditionally manufactured part. And then this video is going to give you some uh, another example. It's a kind of a customer testimonial um, that also will give you uh, and show you how um, the powder bed manufacturing works, uh, specifically on the metal side. But um, I think it's a good customer testimonial. Today's energy mix combines endless power of nature with highly efficient power plants transmitting energy with human engineering. We challenge technology every day, and sometimes it's the small things that make the difference. If you look at this small little turbine blade, it actually looks very tiny and very simple. But at the end of the day, it is one of the most challenging applications, I guess, out there for metal additive manufacturing. Not only did we simply 3D print an existing design of that blade and test it, but we also changed the design of the blade itself in order to improve the performance of the part. Together with YES, we are working with the productivity improvement, uh, with the, let's say, going down with the manufacturing cost. And I believe that we really can add value to, to, to most of us and by doing this, support the rest of the industry. It's easy to generate a prototype or a sample, but it's very hard to 
achieve a physical part that actually stems from digital data uh, with a defined process chain behind and ends up in a rig test and withstands the requirements for a gas turbine component. Um, and this is something that we managed in this project. So now, uh, with this technology, we really can speed up quickly. But uh, what, what needs to be done, uh, we need to, to change the mindset in our designers. So they need to understand this flexibility. 1250 degrees, 1000 miles per hour, 11 tons weight pulling at each plate. If you can print a turbine blade, you can print pretty much everything. It is designed with Siemens and X, produced on AOS equipment, powered by Siemens automation technology, and engineered and manufactured at Siemens and Material Solutions. So now we will get into where we the laser powder bed industry is going. So um, customers are now moving from the prototyping phase, getting into more of the pre-production phase. So a focus on part quality, process robustness, and cost per part is being uh, done today. And now um, in the next few years, we're seeing that a lot of people are looking to take this process and fully automate this process for more for production. So in order to meet the demands, uh, laser powder bed manufacturing is going to have to evolve. Um, so some of the demands are, are evident by Siemens investing in 21 million euro into an AM facility in Finspong, Sweden. SpaceX is scheduling their first additively manufactured uh, parts on a, or flights on a, a rocket engine as well as uh, Orlicon investing over 55 million in an additive manufacturing facility in North Carolina. So these are just a few examples of these customers and, and, and companies that are looking to take laser bed additive manufacturing to the next level in automation. So uh, some of the ways that uh, companies are looking to answer that uh, automation request is uh, being able to produce modular designed machines and being able to automate using different robots and software. So it's gonna take a lot of software integration with hardware integration to be able to go from each step of the process, from building parts to taking to the next step in the process in, in powder management, as well as heat treatment and post-processing with uh, uh, machining in, in the metal side, as well as the polymer side. So uh, being able to recycle the powder quicker and and meet uh, uh, faster production and automated production. So uh, one example of the EOS is teamed up with uh, customers such as uh, Premium Aerotech and Airbus, uh, as well as Daimler to fully automate the process and help work together to solve that problem. Uh, the next video will give you a, uh, uh, a just kind of a sneak peek of that vision. Um, and uh, hopefully give you a good idea of, of what we're looking at in probably the next couple of years of a uh, fully automated cell using laser powder bed additive manufacturing. Together with our partners, Premium Aerotech and Daimler, we move forward, seamlessly integrating industrial 3D printing into serial production. This is how concepts become reality, shaping the production site of tomorrow, expanding our product portfolio with automated manufacturing solutions. One central material depot automatically supplies several additive manufacturing systems. By automating and paralyzing process steps, the production efficiency is maximized. In-sync working ultra-fast quad laser systems significantly increase productivity. Optimized process parameters enable components fit for purpose.
automated processes for the removal and transport of building platforms increase efficiency. Powder and parts are separated automatically, returning the material to the material cycle. After the automated removal of parts and the subsequent heat treatment, a geometric quality assurance takes place. Finally, the parts are separated from the carrier plate. The quality assured and separated parts are available. The future is now. Be part of the next generation of manufacturing with EOS Industrial 3D Printing Solutions. Well, thank you for your attention. I hope that was a uh, helpful and understanding laser powder bed and how uh, how it's affecting our our society today and where it's going for the future. Um, so, thank you guys again for having me for this presentation. <laughs>